So, you want to create a bokeh effect in Blender 2.9 Eevee. Well, you've come to the wrong place because this video is about milkshakes. Hey guys, one by Touch by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again. You guessed it, that's right. Today we're looking at bokeh, which is a type of depth of field, my favorite type of, type of depth of field. It's when everything's so blurry, it starts looking like circles. So, we're going to go ahead and actually create some good stuff with this. The first thing I did is I am in rendered viewport shading up at the top right here. You can see I have this rendered circle on. And I also changed my world background to solid black, as you can see. So, that's the only thing I did, really. So, I'm going to go ahead and select our camera. Uh, my camera is right here, which, just really quickly, is a Shift A. Uh, and we're going to search for camera. Hit R. Uh, hit uh, Alt R to clear the rotation. Then hit R X 90 on your numpad, and then left click to confirm that. Hit G Y to move the camera backwards, and now we are back back where we are. Hit zero on your numpad to go into the front facing view to the camera's view. Sorry. Then go to the camera tab down here, and we have this depth of field option, which is just really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and check that on. But the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create something so you can see depth of field. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift A, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna search for uh, two things. I'm going to search for monkey. We're going to grab Suzanne and we're going to put her off to the side here. We're going to put hit G Y and then G X to move her over a little bit. Hit zero to go back to the camera's view. We're going to move her over here. Double tap R to rotate her a little bit. Just move her kind of, you know, in this way so we can have something to focus on instead of what's in the background. You know what I mean? So we're going to go ahead and hit shift A and search for a plane now. And I'm going to move this plane way back here. So hit G, Y, and move it way back. I'm going to go to solid viewport shading so you can see a little, a little bit easier. And then hit G, Y, and hit zero to make sure that I want this to appear below the camera. So I don't want it to be you know, up in the camera's view at all like that. I want it to be down underneath the camera so you can't see it. Then hit S, X to scale it on the X axis. Then hit R, Y to rotate it on the Y axis. And then hit G to move it over here. You can move it over here. You can move it up. You can move it wherever. I'm just going to move it down here for now. Um, and then it looks good like that. Very cool. Um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the particle tab and hit this little plus button, add a new particle, uh, particle system, sorry. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play on this simulation. I'm going to make sure that our end frame is on 200 and I'm actually going to change my, my uh, frame rate from 60 to 24. Um, and now we look a little bit better. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the particle tab and we're going to change the a couple of things here. So I'm going to go down to field weights and turn gravity to zero. So now the particles float up. But as you can see, they disappear. So I'm going to change the lifetime to 200. So now they don't just die prematurely. Um, and we're going to go ahead and change the, da -da -da -da, the physics. We're going to change the Brownian to like uh, 0.2 maybe 0.2 just so they all kind of get a, a little bit more crazy uh, a little bit more than that 0.5 uh, yeah. uh, a little bit more than that we'll just do one just do a solid one that's fine with me so now they're kind of drifting in different places which looks much better i'm gonna do higher than that screw it i'm doing two um <laughs> we're gonna put that on two this is all personal preference, of course. You can do whatever you want. Um, but we're going to go ahead and change a couple more things here. So I want to make them come out faster. So in the physics, we're going to change the mass to maybe like... Uh, well, not, 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 I'm sorry, not the physics. We're going to put that back on one. The velocity, I apologize. We're going to put this on two. We're going to put the, that, that uh, normal on one from one to two. I'm actually going to actually m rotate this even more like this. Just double tap R and then hit S. Uh, X again to kind of scale this up like that and I want to change the number of particles to something a little bit lower maybe 800 instead of 1000 and then we're going to change the randomize in the velocity to one play this from the beginning one might be a little bit too much but that's fine uh, no that's fine I think I, I, think that, I like that it's good it's fine it's fine it's good all right so now we got something like this but they're just like Weird balls in the background. They don't actually do anything. And if we render it, you can't see them. So we're going to fix that by doing two things. Hit Shift A to search for a circle. And before we do anything, it says add circle. As you can see, it made a little, you know, invisible circle. I'm going to hit add circle down here and change the number of vertices from 32 to 16 because we don't need that many vertices. And we're also going to make sure the fill type is from nothing to in gone. So there's actually a face there now. I'm going to select this circle. Hit G Y to move it back behind the camera. And then hit R X. 90 on my numpad to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis hit left click to confirm that movement and now you can see we have a nice circle here i'm going to hit period to go into that so we can zoom in so i can move a little bit slower because i was moving i was moving really super fast um 
I'm going to select our camera. Uh, actually, I'm going to select our circle. I'm going to keep, keep doing our circle. Go to the Material tab. Hit this little drop down. Select Material. And then uh, make sure this is on Emission. So this, this will be on Principle BSDF. I don't know why it was on Emission by default. Uh, and then we're going to go to Emission. And now you can see the strength is on 1. Uh, I'm going to leave that on 1. But I'm going to change this to a nice yellow color like that. Um, which looks really cool. Um, what else do I want to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to leave this. I'm going to put this on Principal BSDF. I, I'll, I'll, then I'll tell you why later. So I'm going to change this from Principal BSDF. I'm going to leave it on Principal BSDF and then just make that make it that same yellow color. Now, what we're going to do is with our plane selected, I'm going to go back to the particle tab, which is this bad boy right here. Um, and then we're going to change in the render section. I'm going to change this from render as halo to render object. Now we're going to select our instance object down here, which is going to be our circle. And now you can see when we play this, it plays with the circles, but they're rotated the wrong way. So I'm going to check object rotation, and I'm also going to go down to extra, uh, not extra, I'm sorry. I'm going to go up, uh, up here to render, and we're going to change the scale up like this, and then I'm going to change the scale randomness practically all the way down. Not all the way down, but practically all the way down. Now, looks good. I really like this. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger, maybe a little tiny bit like that. Cool. Now. You can see if we were to go ahead and look at this, you couldn't see anything because it's on principle BSDF, so they're really dark because the scene is dark. So I'm going to hit period while selecting our plane so we can zoom in a little bit here. Uh, back to the solid viewport shading. I'm going to hit shift A, and we're going to add in a couple lamps. So light, point, and then we're going to go ahead and move this up by hitting G and move this down here. Uh, move this kind of in the way of the particles just so it lights some of them up is what I'm doing pretty much. I'm going to hit... Um, Render viewport change so we can see this needs to be brighter, obviously. So I'm going to change the power to 100. Um, and we're going to add a couple of these. So we just have some darker ones, some lighter ones. We can hit Shift D, move this one down here, kind of maybe in the middle, like this. I'm going to make sure that they're on cam, not on camera, sorry, as much as possible. I'm going to hit Shift D, duplicate, add another one up here, something like that. And then we can take a look at this now. You can see we have multiple different lamps lighting up multiple different of the particles so some of them are bright some of them are dark somewhere in the, in the middle somewhere around there which looks very cool i'm gonna turn viewport denoising off so we can see it easier it's not as blurry and nauseating um there we go so we have a couple different many different colored um circles here now which looks very 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 cool but now it's not bokeh at all so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and select our camera and we're gonna go to depth of field to make sure that's still checked on remember that bad boy I'm also going to grab one real quick thing. I'm going to hit Shift-D and add in another light. So for Su for Suzanne, move it up by hitting G-Y and then just change the power to like 100 or something. So we can see Suzanne. I'm also going to just real quick put a modifier of subdivision surface on her and then make sure, go up to Object, Shade Smooth, and now she looks a little bit better. There we go. So that looks good. I like it. With our, with our camera selected, once again, we're going to go back to this. We're going to grab the camera, go to Depth of Field, and then make sure the Focus Object is either Suzanne, like this, and then go to f-stop and change the f-stop way down. And as you can see, we get these big, nice depth of field um, circles, but they're not very bright. And the reason for this is because, once again, these lamps are just not bright enough. So I'm actually going to bump these this power up to like 1,000 for this one in the middle here. Oh, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, that looks much better. We're getting those big, 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 big depth of field um, like balls, spheres in the background, which looks, looks very, very cool. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to make sure this isn't going to show up in the render. So I'm going to go to particle tab and then make sure show emitter is off under the render section. So we cannot see that plane when we render it. Um, in any case, just to make sure I'm also going to go ahead and go to the main tab and check bloom on, um, and then turn the threshold down a little bit like that. And then turn the radius up just a little bit and turn the intensity all the way up. Um, so that should add a little bit of bloom on some of these bad boys. Now, as you can see, uh, Suzanne is kind of blurry, and that's because it is it is focused on the center of Suzanne. So I'm going to go back to our camera, and the better way to do this, instead of doing it uh, by hitting focus on object, I'm going to check that off, and we're going to make sure that the focus distance is proper. So I'm going to select, I'm going to go down to do, 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 viewport display, and make sure limits is checked on. So now if we go ahead and take a look at this, you can see the limit is set right here on this like yellow crosshair. So I'm going to change this down, and I'm going to make the focus distance on Suzanne's face. And now you can see if I if we take a look at this, it is now clear. So that is what we're going to do. That is it for today's tutorial. I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed this very simple, quick, depth of field, bokeh tutorial. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.